Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozork and in this video I wanna talk about Comprehensive Abacus Packet Chapter 5 Update 1 Mesh Transition Zones and Meshing the Crack Tips Preview How to ask your video related questions Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below we will try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. New Abacus users who want to develop their modeling skills faster in their projects can request user-oriented online and offline services. Subsequently, we offer a step-by-step -step guidance, tutoring, and consultancy regarding their problems. The online service includes online sessions and the offline service includes creating a special tutorials. In addition, a combination of the two can be requested. 50% discount codes are announced on our Abacus Telegram channel and official LinkedIn page. Their links are provided in the description below the tutorial. In the following, you will watch a preview of the first update for Chapter 5. In Chapter 5, the mesh transition zone and its necessities were discussed and a RBS beam was meshed by defining a mesh transition zone. In this update, in the first example, another meshing strategy based on creating two mesh transition zones will be explained and compared with defining only one mesh transition zone. In the second example, the procedure of defining the forecast spiderweb mesh pattern is explained in detail. The forecast spiderweb mesh pattern must be generated around the crack tip when calculating the stress intensity factors or J integral via the contour integral method. Um, here you can see the RBS beam example that was solved in chapter 5 and here um, the mesh transition zone is defined using hex elements and here the mesh transition zone is defined using wedge elements. Um, here the geometry and other things are the same and the only different thing is the mesh transition zones. In the first example, I want to create uh, two cases. In the first case, we have one mesh transition zone. And here you can see the number of nodes and the number of elements. And in the second case, which is the similar geometry, uh, I will create two mesh transition zones. And here you can see the number of nodes and the number of elements. And by comparing these two mesh reports, you can see that more than a 40% decrease in the number of elements has happened when we use two mesh transition zones instead of one mesh transition zone. So in this case, the simulation will be more efficient and uh, this case is much better. Now I want to create the geometry. It is a rectangle, the sketch of the geometry, and its depth is 5. I go to Abacus. I think uh, I have done everything correctly and the general shape is the same. Um, the general shape is the same. Um, now I go to the second example. I save it. In the second example, I want to define a spider web mesh pattern for fracture analysis of elliptical cracks based on API 579 standard. Um, uh, here 
you can see that uh, we have a elliptical crack here on this corner and uh, this mesh is according to the API uh, 579 standard uh, uh, which is about uh, fitness for service and uh, this mesh is discussed in the, in the, in the standard in uh, chapter 9 Annex G um, and uh, you can go and check it um, and here I want to create uh, this mesh pattern uh, it is vital when you want to calculate a stress intensity factors or J integral using a contour integral method for a stationary cracks in abacus um, In this case, I name it plate with crack. It is 3D deformable solid extrusion, and um, these are the dimensions. It is a new part. That's it. And I create a partition. Um, first I create a datum plane and then I create a partition because uh, here we have the crack. Okay, our crack is on the mid plane of uh, the part. So first of all, we must create its surface, its internal surface. Um, here you can see the crack dimensions are uh, basically the larger diameter of the crack is 1.2 it is 2c and the smaller diameter of the crack is 0.6 it is 2a so c is equal to 0.6 and a is equal to 0.3 and the crack geometry is created on the crack plane, uh, which I have created it. It is the mid plane. And um, this is the first end of the crack, and this is the second of the crack. So I go and create it. I set it to wireframe. It's done. And on each half circle, I create eight elements, okay? And uh, totally 16 elements on each circle. According to the abacus documentation, this is the minimum possible number of elements to maintain the accuracy of calculating J integral or stress intensity factors, okay? So, um, I select these half circles eight And also, 
uh, align the crack tip and all the connecting elliptical lines, uh, the approximate element size is 0 0.025. So, um, if I set it to XY view, and all of these, the element size is 0 0.025. That's it. Also here, uh, I will use a uh, bias method because uh, near the crack, the element size must be uh, small. And uh, when we are in the far field or uh, we are not close to the crack, then uh, the element size must be large. So. must be wedge um, for the first circle we use wedge elements uh, because in the focus spider web mesh pattern the first contour must be meshed using wedge elements these elements will work as the collapse hexahedral elements during the calculation of stress intensity factors and J integral very good And also, I did this setting for the mesh transition zone. And also, now I must set the element type. Um, here. 
here uh, we have the settings for all the elements actually we use the quadratic elements um, because uh, uh, this will have more accuracy when you are uh, calculating a stress intensity factor or J integral using uh, uh, contour integral method uh, and here you can see that we have the spider web mesh pattern it's like a pizza the first contour also here and uh, actually uh, I don't go forward and uh, to do other calculations uh, and do other settings uh, because uh, this chapter is only for meshing and uh, partitioning and uh, uh, here I have covered uh, all the points and uh, if I show you these um, if I want to show you these settings uh, This is the crack tip. This is the crack tip. Basically, uh, I have done all the settings in order to have the optimum number of elements uh, to have uh, an accurate simulation uh, with the minimum possible duration. How to purchase packages or individual chapters? Each of the packages and individual chapters includes CAE, JNL, and IMP files, step-by-step -step tutorials with detailed explanations and investigation of the results, slides and reference papers, and standards. Packages, specifications, and payment details are provided in the video description. Also, you can pay the cost of the packages in two, three, or four installments according to your budget or income. About the updates, in the future, updates will be provided for free for everybody who purchases each chapter or each package. The cost of each chapter or package will increase after each update for new buyers, but those who purchase the package would have endless access to all the upcoming updates. This will make the content up to date for new needs and new problems which must be solved via FE simulation. You can contact me via telegram or whatsapp or you can send email to me about our services we have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the anydesk whatsapp and making a special tutorials to your order we can conduct high quality simulations for thesis exercises and industrial projects and we can hold training sessions courses webinars based on the user requirements and we offer support in writing the modeling and result discussion part of your thesis. And we have consulting services for MSc, PhD positions or job interviews. And finally, we can help you to prepare the presentation of your simulation works. Now, I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.